Good morning. I'm Jackie from the Stitch and Post. And today, the demo that I'm going to do is cutting fabric from Tula's Line Works line. And the quilt that I have behind me here, whoops, it's just the top. I literally just got it done a couple of days ago. It's the equal lateral quilt. And if you look at it, the triangles here, all these animals are directional. Uh, and the little ones, the animals are directional also. So what I am here to show you today is how to cut these from your kit, directional fabrics with the fabric that's included in the kit. That's very important because I cut mine wrong the first time. My birds, my peacocks, they were going upside down. And so I thought, hey, I need to do a demo so that our customers will be able to get the most out of their fabric. So what I want to start with is this is what comes in the kit when you receive it, all these fabrics, okay? Now, there's six animal prints. And out of those six animal prints, they're going different directions. Some have the motifs following the salvage, and some have the motifs going from salvage to salvage. So I'm going to show you how to cut those, because that's two different ways to cut them. But there are fabrics in here that aren't directional. So this is the pattern right here, OK? And I try to make mine look exactly like the cover, because this is a kit for the store. And I know that there are thousands of these around the country from other quilt shops that are doing it. So what you have in here is this is the cover, and then you actually have the fabrics that you need here, little pictures of them, which is great. Well, fabric A, B, C, D, E, K, and L, you don't, it doesn't matter how you cut those. You can just follow the pattern and cut them the way the pattern tells you to. Don't get me wrong, the pattern's fabulous. The cutting's correct. Everything is very accurate on this pattern. It's just you are using directional fabric. So fabrics F, F, J, and M, down here, right here, those all run with their, their motifs run from salvage to salvage, OK? And then, oh, let me show you. And here I have them laid out. So here's the bird, the peacock. There's the zebra. And you can see it's running this way, OK? And then also the journal, although the journal it is, it ha it's running, it does have a direction it's running, but you can cut that upside down, right side up, because some of the animals are upside down, some are right side up. But you still have to cut it correctly, okay? Then the panda, it's probably easier just to say the name of the fabric. So the panda and the lemur, you can see they're running, they run from, uh, they run along the, the salvage, right? I think so, yeah. But they're, uh, they're horizontal. See, it's really easy to see with the panda. But you also have the lemur and who's behind here? The little skunk. OK, so they get cut a little bit differently than the peacocks, which we just have to cut things differently. So I'm actually going to cut the peacock up. I don't have to cut the other ones up in the demo because you will be able to figure it out from when I cut the peacock. OK, the first thing you want to do is press your fabric. Get rid of that little press in the middle where the F uh, fabric's folded in half, okay, off the bolt. I've already done that. So now I want to even up the edge of my fabric. So I'm going to fold it, wrong sides together, just like if it came off the bolt. And because you only have 5 eighths, you really need to be accurate with your first cut. Line up the salvages together, okay? Make sure there's no lumps or bumps. If it's got a funny little doohickey in it like this. It's not straight. Don't cut it. Straighten it out. OK. So mine was off a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So I'm going to take a ruler, and I'm going to straighten that out. Now, I should probably let you know that I'm left-handed. So my cutting might be a, look a little odd to you. But I'm going to try and cut it uh, upside down, if that makes sense. You'll see when I start cutting. And it should be a mirror image for you, and you should be able to, to follow actually look at your computer and follow along. Okay, I'm going to turn it around. Now, depending on which ruler you want to use, I have their 60 degree angle rulers, OK? This one has a blunt tip, which I happen to really like. This one doesn't. It has a pointy tip. You can use either or. 
but you need to make sure you read the directions because you have to cut your strips according to the size of ruler that you're using. If you're using the pointy tip, you cut your first strip seven and three quarter inches. If you're using the blunt tip, it's seven and a half inches. You basically take a quarter inch off for that seam allowance is disappearing here. So I'm going to use the blunt, so I'm going to cut mine seven and a half. And for the bird, I'm cutting the most difficult one first because I need to make sure I get all the pieces. So I'm going to cut it seven and a half inches, and I'm actually going to cut two of these. Okay. I can't do too much fussy cutting because I don't have enough fabric to fussy cut. Now, I'm also going to need a strip according to the directions that's either four and a quarter inches if you're using the pointy tip or four inches if you're using the boint, uh, blunt tip. I'm using the blunt tip, so I'm going to cut my four inches. Again, you're going to be doing this for, oops, you didn't see that. <laughs> okay. All right, so put this off to the side. <laughs> all right, now I'm going to open this up all the way. Lay it out like this. Now, you're, you're looking at this fabric so it's going directional. So you can see the birds, they're going south there, or north. Excuse me, no, south. They're going down where you want them to be. So I'm a little upside down here, but that's okay. I can make this work. I'm actually going to lay both of mine on top of each other. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't do it. Do one at a time. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start at this end. Now, on your directions, make sure that you're reading these. This is, the peacock is fabric F. Okay, so on my directions here on fabric F, it says I need one seven and three quarter inch strip, but I did mine seven and a half. And then I asked from that I need to get seven large triangles. Okay, I could do that if I could use both ends. You're going to find out here why I can't. So I cut two strips. Okay. And this is why. Now, looking at here, all of these large triangles, notice the fat end is on top. I'm sure there's a name for that fat end, but I don't, I don't know. Anyway, so you want to make sure that your animals, that point is pointing down with your animals going that direction. So we come back to the fabric. Here's my peacocks. I'm going to lay this on here. So when I cut this, I'm going to go all as close to the salvage down here as I can. Okay, lay it on here. See my blunt tip here? It matches with my fabric. Okay, and I'm going to cut this. Yeah, 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 I know. I get on my students' cases about don't cut like that, and I'm doing it. Okay, so here's my first two. They're correct. Yay, everybody's going the correct direction. Now, if, by doing two layers, you better make sure you get the bottom layer the right side up because you can have upside down ones and not see it. All right, now normally, you would actually flip your ruler and cut like this so you get the most use out of your strip of fabric. But we can't because we can't use those. Those would be turned the other way around. And my peacocks would be going upside down. This is what I did the first time I cut it. And I didn't realize till I was halfway through the second one, second fabric, that my birds were upside down. So I had to go refigure this thing. So ignore that and you're just going to move along your strip all on one side. So I'm going to cut this again. Again, line this up as close as you can to the end there so you don't waste any fabric. Okay, I'm going to try it this way this time. Pull that away. Save those. Don't get rid of those. There's two more. So now I have four of my seven. And I'm going to cut two more. And then I'm going to have six. It's like basic math, huh? Yep. Okay. Now, for those of you who are homeschooling your kids right now, you can have them come help you with your math if you can't figure it out. Okay? There's six. Now I just need one more. I'm not going to cut through both of them. I'm going to cut through one of them. Oh, look at this. I'll be able to, oh, I won't be able to fussy cut it because it's up here. But I might be able to use that for, let's see, where's the other one? Right here. Nah. Oh, bummer. But I will go ahead and do this because I'm going to use this piece later. Okay, again, line it up. Cut your seventh piece. I 
again, I have an issue. Okay. All right, I have my seven big ones. Yay. And I have all these little ones here still. Hang on to those. Now we need to cut our little guys, which my strip is four inches. I'm actually going to leave this strip together. I'm not going to unfold it yet, although there's no crease there, which is nice. Right now I have it wrong side. I, the birds are looking at me. I want them going the other direction. There we go. There. Now, you can't see much. All you see is bird butts, but that's okay. But now look at the, again, look at your um, quilt. Now these animals, the long end is down and that you want the heads pointing up. Okay, so if that makes sense. You can see the zebra easy. The zebra and the pandas are really easy to see direction. The other ones, not so much. Okay, so I'm going to turn mine this way again. So it's upside down to you, but it's right side up to me. Okay, so I'm going to start cutting here, and I need 18 of these. It's like, how am I going to get 18? Well, I will. Yes. From, yeah, Val says, oh, from the big ones. The light bulb went off on her head. Mm-hmm. And she is right. You have the hardest one to get your fabric, your cuts from. So I didn't do a very good job there. You might not see my mistakes, but I do. Okay. See? Oops. All right. There's two. Again, we would normally flip it this way, but we're not going to. We're going to line it up again. I'm sorry, this is kind of long and tedious, but let me tell you, when you start cutting your quilt, you're going to be very happy that you have something to follow because you can't use these for this quilt because they're, there's no, they're, not too, they're too small, but you can do something with them save when it. you're done. Yeah, it's tool fabric. Of course you're going to save it. I have a pile from my original quilt, this one back here, and I'm going to do, I don't know what I'm going to do, like a little throw or something. Okay. So now I've got four. This will be six. I'll be able to get, I think I can only get eight out of this strip. Keep those together. I tried, well, you'll see in a second. I tried opening it up to see if I could get a ninth one, but nah, couldn't do it. That's enough. Those are my, okay. Not quite, see, it's not mm -hmm. quite big enough. Mm -hmm. So, but don't throw it away. Hang on to it. Just put those off to the side. So I have eight here, okay? Now. I still have this left over. I'm going to hang on to those, get rid of that. Okay, so you can either cut this long one into a four inch strip, which I'm going to do, and I'm going to, just because it's probably easier to show you, because we just got done doing the exact same thing with the long strip. If you're hoping to have a lot of leftover fabric, you're not going to. Oh, that piece is not big enough. It's too short. Okay, but this one we can cut. Okay. Well, I, well, okay. I can't. I can't do it. As much as you want to fussy cut it, there's just not enough fabric. You have to go buy more and good luck with that. Okay. Oh, well, come December, we'll have more. Okay. There's nine. Number 10. Eleven. I don't know if I'm going to get twelve out of this, but I am going to get. We'll see. I don't think so. I don't. I think it's too. Um, too. I can't. Okay. So. Okay. So what is that? Six, seven, eight. I got nine. Nine here now total. Then I still have this little piece, so we can get another one out of this. Okay. I'm going to go up here because I can get two out of this. I think. If I did this right, mm -hmm. four, yeah, right here. All right. And then I'm going to get another one here. See that? Just pull that back a little bit. And then you'll get another one. I'm not going to cut this one off yet. But. So now I just need to cut four inches off of this, cut it to four inches, and I will have one more here. Okay, there's that one. Um, I can't remember where we are now. 11, maybe. 
And then, oh, then this one I get to blunt the end. Okay, blunt the end. And then cut four inches off this one. I know it just seems like a lot of work, but this is... Okay, so this is 13. All right, now, all these triangles over here we have. See all these guys? I think there's five here. Yeah, so I'll be 18. And sorry, that's the only way you're going to get them. Okay, I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger cut because I actually like those birds there. I want to get them. So I'm actually cutting all at the same time. You can do one at a time if you want and fussy cut. But for time's sake, I am going to do one. Okay, boom. Now that's the blunted. Now I'm going to cut four inches down here. Because here's my blunt end. I need four inches. And oop, open the blade. Boom. There we go. I have all of my pieces I need. Woohoo! Okay. Yeah, it seems like a lot of work, but it's worth it. Totally worth it. Now we're going to take a break for a second and get set up to do the other fabric going the other direction. Okay, so we're back, and now we're going to cut the fabric that runs vertical. So I'm going to start with the panda, okay? So because we want our panda to run correctly here, we're going to cut our strips this way, all right? I'm going to cut off the little salvage on one end, salvage. I always say that incorrectly. Sorry, don't correct me. I know I'm saying it wrong. Okay, get rid of that. And we need, on this one, this is actually the panda and it's fabric G, so we need five large triangles, one left triangle on the side here, and two right triangles. Okay, so we're gonna cut our strips, again, because I'm using the, the triangle that has the blunt end, seven and a half inches. And I'm actually going to cut a few of those. I can get two of the big triangles out of each strip, and I need five. So I'm going to cut three strips, okay? Two there. Two here. And two more. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to cut are my left and right half triangles for the sides. Okay, you can do them individually or you can fold your fabrics together like so, you know, like this, like you, it was on a bolt. And when I cut them, I'm going to have one going each direction. Okay, does that make sense? It does, trust me. So we're going to even up the little edge here just a little bit. And remember that your panda needs to be going with his little head pointing up and his chin pointing down. So these little half square, or half triangles, I'm going to use, I have the, the straight edge there, so I can actually, aha, now see I would be doing this upside down because when I turn it around, these would be upside down pandas. So I'm gonna actually get a, slip them over like this. Now, I'm looking at him. This time I'm looking at him because I don't wanna mess up, okay? So I'm gonna lay this here line this up. This little dotted line, you probably can't really see it. It's a little black dotted line here. That's my seam allowance. So I'm going to lay that right on the edge of the panda. And the little blunt in is up here. I'm going to cut this. Check this out. Oh, check it out. I cut them upside down. I made a mistake. Okay. Uh, that was not good. But I can fix that with this one that I'm going to cut. Oh, I'm going to cut my... I, I blew that. I want my panda here. I'm going to turn around so you can see it. I need this, this fat edge up here. Okay. So I'm just going to lay this one on here right now. And I'm going to actually go in a quarter inch here. Get that nice and straight. And it looks like I'm quarter inch. There we go. There we go. All right. Cut this. Whoops. This is what I want. One on this side, and one on this side. Okay, but I actually need a couple, I need a couple more of these. So, 
That needs to be the top. Oh, see, this will work. Okay. And I actually just need one more, but I'm going to go ahead and cut two. Boom. So I got two more. I need two for one side and one for the other side. So I got the three pieces that I need. I have a little extra one there. You never know when an extra one will come in handy. Now, there's not enough here to do a big triangle. Oh, I lied. There is. Check it out. Ooh, and I can even actually make my little panda. Oh, no, I don't because my panda needs to go down. Doing this upside down is a little interesting for me. So I'm going to hold this off to the side, though, because I might need it for the little ones. Okay? Never. Okay. But meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and layer these guys. I'm only going to get two. Okay, I'm going to cut another strip because I need it for my, my big panda. Seven and a half inches. I'm going to layer all three together because I need... How many of these do I need? Five or six? I need five. Okay. Thank you, Valerie. I need five. She's keeping track. The rest of that's going to be little guys. Okay. So. Layer, layer, layer. Even up the little edges. Make sure they're all going the same direction. So if I make a mistake, I make a big one. Here we go. All right. Now, again, the panda's heads need to be here, okay, with their heads going north and their chins going south. Line that up. I'm going to cut three right now. Pull those aside. Move this over. Again, line it up. Okay. Cut these guys. You can walk around your table. Okay. There, I got my, I actually have six. I only need five, but that's okay. We'll keep that other one because I can use it for a scrap and a little scrappy thing that I'm going to do. So these little guys, I'm going to hang on to those. These are my good ones. This is an extra panda. I can use these for those extra little four inch triangles. And the same thing with, the, oh, hey. Well, we'll come back to that in a second. Okay, now we're going to cut the rest of this up into four inch strips. We're almost done with him. So close. And I believe I need 18 of these. You need 18 on most of these. Yes, 18. Uh, so I uh, love the pattern. Pattern's great. Again, like I said, this has nothing to do with the pattern. It has to do with the way you're cutting your fabric for your pattern. That's it. Uh, not how, I'm not telling you how to put it together, except for when I quilt, I like to have my whole entire quilt cut out and actually laid out. So I had the whole top laid out before I started sewing. And it took me about 10 hours to do the quilt top after everything was pre-cut, okay, and laid out. So then it took me about 10 hours. I tie myself. I was bored. Okay, now the fat end, mm-hmm. Needs to be on the bottom here for the little ones because they go the opposite direction. Remember? Mm -hmm. So here we go. And there's three deep. So I'm going to get three every time I make a cut here. And three is one block. Now also in this pattern, true colors is used for the little spark of color in the quilt. That, they, are, they come in charm packs. And the charm packs you cut the same way. Okay, you just need a, cut the whole entire charm pack up. I believe you have two extra ones left over when, um, when all said and done. You, get, you have two, each package has two left over, so you'll have four left over. And the pattern actually gives you a schematic so you can make it exactly like her sample. All the little true colors will be in the correct blocks. Okay, we're getting there. Should have closed that. Get down, down, down. Okay. Whoops, one more. Here we go. Make sure your blunt end is lined up with your fabric. I have to adjust myself all the time. Okay. So I got one, two, three, four. So that's what? Six? That's 12 there. Here are these guys. So I have 12. And I need 18. So we go to these little piles, 12, there's three here, this will be 15. 
You can, because right now, at this point, you can actually kind of fussy cut these little heads right here. That one, so I could do them individually and cut my heads. Maybe I will on this one. Oh, I kind of want one on that one, so I'm going to cut it separately, okay? I have to actually have this looking at me, otherwise I'll do it wrong. So, what do I want here? Make sure I have the right thing here. Yeah, okay. It's a four-inch strip, so I'm... I'm Oh, I'm going to move it up a little bit. Okay, I'm taking my time here. I probably shouldn't be doing that. Sorry, but I'm just fussy cutting him because he's so cute with his little head there. Well, the, there's so many times where you actually can't put the, you don't get a fussy cut very often. So when I get a chance, I'm going to do it. And this one, I'll make sure his little ears are in the seam allowance there. And this is easy. I just turn it around and cut four inches off that. Because that's how wide this strip is. Four inches. Boom. All right, there's another one. Woohoo! So that's 15, I, I believe, if I'm counting right. So now we just need three more. Okay. So I can go one, two, three right there. I'm actually going to make this easy so I have a little bit of leftover space over here. Go down to the four inches. Gosh, I'm going to leave, because I didn't even this up here. I'm going to leave a little bit extra on the bottom there and go back and trim it up in a second. Uh, the, the little fussy cutting you have to do, but to make the fabric that you have in the kit work, you really need to do this. Otherwise, your animals are going to be going the wrong directions. And I, I don't want that. I did that. You want your animals all going the correct direction. That's it. Panda's cut out. Boom. So he's all done. So you do that with, the, with your, your vertical fabric and your, your uh, horizontal fabric. You'll be fine. Now the other fabrics that are left here are these six. Okay. These, it doesn't matter. You're going to cut them all exactly the same. Super simple. I'm going to use a white one because the black's too hard to see on the black mat. This is super quick. This is how you would want to cut them in the first place. Uh, I did not press these. Sorry about that. Turn that over. I got a little spot on that there. Okay, here we go. Seven and a half inches. I need, this one is fabric L. So on fabric L, I need L, 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 L. Where's fabric L? Oh, okay. I need six large triangles and 18 small triangles. I don't need any of the half triangles. So again, seven and a half inches. I only need two of these strips. And I am not even going to open this up. I'm just going to cut it like this. Living wild. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Line that up. And this is what you want to do with all of them, but you can't. This is what the pattern tells you to do. There's two. Turn it. I saved the easy cutting for last. There's four. Turn it. There's six. Now, when I say I needed that? Six. Oh, I got them right here. There we go. There's my six. Boom. Just like that. I have my six large triangles. I need 18 small ones. So I will get... I think I need two of these strips, four inch strips. And all these, these six fabrics are all cut exactly the same. So it's simple. You can start with the easy ones or end with the easy ones. Just make sure when you're laying these out that you've got your animals going the correct direction. Look, measure twice, cut once. Unlike me where I made mistakes. You don't want to do that. You just, otherwise you have to use your mistakes. And if that's the case, you can go through and try and find the ones that actually, um, look like they're going the right direction. I had to do that in a few of them. So there, this is, I need 18 of these. This is four. I know. I, yeah, Val said I need to learn to cut with my right hand. That's true. Okay, I've tried that, but, okay, fine. Let's try it right now, okay? okay. Well, no, because this is going to work for me here. <laughs> I think it'll, late. yeah, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. Four, eight, 12, 16, I'll have 20. 
and I'll, that's fine. Me, I would go ahead and cut everything up and I use all the little extra ones for a pillow or something after the fact. Or you could piece something together and put it on the back of your quilt. Okay, there I have enough. So, I have enough of these guys. So the white ones, so the, the ones that have no direction, this is how you cut them. It's pretty easy. I hope I answered, I don't have any questions. I mean, I don't know if Val has any questions, but um, this is the way we do it. And if you need any help cutting, go ahead and give me an email, you know, drop me an email or something. And it's Jackie at stitchandpost.com and I might be able to help you, but hopefully the video helps you out a lot because you really don't want to mess your fabrics up. Have a nice day. And I don't know if anybody noticed between the first part of this video and the second part of the video, my hair disappeared. It's because I went and got a haircut in between. Ha! Huh. <laughs>